This is a Skidoo Touring SLE. I'd like to clean the carburetors on this machine. So before I get into the project, what I've already done is I took a, a basic measurement of how much play I've got in the choke here. By lifting on the choke and then experimenting with different thicknesses on that feeler gauge, I think I've got a reasonably good measurement on that uh, clearance. So I may need this reference for later, but maybe not. But I have it if I do need it. So I'll set this aside. It seems as though this air box is only mounted to the carburetors with these clamps. Because if I lift on the air box, it seems as though it's just resting there. So after I get those clamps loose, then I'll have a better idea if that's really the case. So I've already got the carburetors loose from the air box here. Oh, it looks like there is something attached. So the ignition coil is bolted to the air box. See? Spark plug wires. Follow the wires. Right to there. There's a coil there. So I'll remove that coil. Then I should be able to get that air box out. So change of plans. I thought I would leave the coil on the box and just remove it out as one assembly. Oh, but I, <laughs> I've still got to remove the, i got to unplug the wires that go to the coil, not these wires, leave those, but I still have a connector there. I have to, un have to undo that one. This wiring connector it may have as many as three locating tabs to uh, join the uh, two portions together. So one is visible on this side. It may have one here on the top. It looks like there is another one on this side. So it may require some effort to get this thing separated. But I think I can already get the carburetors off the machine without removing the air box. So I think I'm going to do that. But I would still like to get that air box out of there because I also want to replace this battery. It's somewhat behind the air box as well. But So anyways, when the carburetors are off, then I should have easy access to unbolt the coil. So I think this may be the original battery on this machine, which would mean it's over 20 years old. Before I remove these choke cables, I'm going to take a measurement on the thread of the uh, cable that did not have the loose lock nut. So I'll just set the caliper aside and that will give, th this caliper later will uh, give me a starting point as to where to set the uh, choke plungers on these carbs. Something I noticed about these choke cables. So there's a lock nut right here. So this appears to look normal here. But on the other cable, the lock nut was loose and turned basically to the top. Like I had already been turning on it after I noticed it. So that uh, nut was somewhere in this area, maybe all the way to the top or close to the top. So, but I'll show you something. Turn the nut all, all the way to the bottom. Look how much thread is exposed there compared to this one. So this one looks like it has more thread showing. So I suspect that this plunger for the uh, choke on this carburetor may be in too far. And when I was testing for a clearance here on this choke lever, I may actually have only been feeling the resistance from uh, the plunger that's in this carburetor as this one is probably, I'm going to guess, in too far and I could not even feel the resistance from that one on the, the lever here. So it looks like it's going to require some uh, setting on those uh, depths for those plungers. 
I removed this throttle slide that uh, gave me a little bit extra room to get at this uh, choke plunger on the other carburetor. So now I would like to remove this plunger on this one. It's like there's a little uh, locking tab on the side. I just bent that out of the way a bit. I want to be really careful with this. So after removing the fuel lines off the carburetors, I've already got this one off. This one is ready to come out as well. I've got these clamps loose. tested this battery very low voltage here I'm testing it again so there's a, a blue dot and a red dot it looks like they may have marked these carburetors from the factory so a blue dot on this one and this one, the red dot is almost gone. So I took the engraver and I marked them L and R in case I lose the dots during the cleaning process. So what may be happening is the carburetors may be jetted slightly different left and right because of the uh, way the cylinders get air from the fan. So the one cylinder will get the cool air and then the one beside it will get the slightly preheated air. So one cylinder likely runs hotter than the other so I'm just speculating here of, uh, I don't know exactly what uh, is happening here with the uh, the dots but uh, it makes sense to me so I will uh, stick with the carburetor location and keep the left side on the left side and the right on the right 